Abnormalities are a pretty big part of Project Moon games. Whether they are used for the sake of producing energy, powering up librarians, or as a secondary target of Limbus Company, there are a lot of abnormalities that you have to fight. Luckily, in order to help categorize these anomalies, the higher-ups of Lobotomy Corporation created a classification system which gives each abnormality a series of digits that can serve to help differentiate various factors about them. Or that would be lucky, if not for the sudden dissolution of Lobotomy Corporation in a giant beam of light. But luckily again, Limbus Company has their own classification system for abnormalities to fill in that gap. But just how different are the two systems, how similar are they, and can we use our knowledge in order to get a good sense of the abnormality classifications in Limbus? Let's find out, starting with going over how the workers at Lobotomy Corporation classified abnormalities. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe for more. But no more of that, let's get to the video. Let's try and set the groundwork first. Abnormality codes in Lobotomy Corporation are broken into four parts. For convenience's sake, I'm going to be referring to these as the letter code, the number code, the individual code, and the risk level. Now, let's go through these in order to get a good sense as to just what exactly they mean. Starting out with the letter code. The letter code consists of one of four different letters, O, F, T, or D. This is the one that we know the meaning of for certain, as according to an interview from Project Moon from 2018, O stands for original, F is for fairy tale, T is for trauma, and D is for donator. These each relate to the origins of their respective abnormalities and what they are based off of. Fairy tale is for abnormalities that are based off of fairy tales. There are a lot of these thanks to Project Moon's frequent usage of classic stories. Exactly what counts as a fairy tale isn't set in stone, as while it does include things based on classic fairy tales such as Little Red Riding Hood Mercenary being based on Little Red Riding Hood, it also includes stuff like abnormalities, for example, like the open can of Welchers, which is more so a Korean modern urban legend than a fairy tale. So it's probably safer to say that F abnormalities are based off of stories in general rather than just confine it to fairy tales. Trauma is for abnormalities that are based off of specific traumas, with the most common ones being based on fears. This can be something like the happy teddy bear being based on fears of loneliness, or more specific fears such as 1.76 MHz being based on fears regarding the smoke war. Original mostly serves as a catch-all for abnormalities that aren't related to a specific story or fear. It includes abnormalities like One Sin, Plague Doctor, but not White Knight, the birds, the magical girls, and a lot of other more random abnormalities. It's really hard to get a general sense of what exactly this classification is beyond just a catch-all. Donator is less of an actual classification than a meta-classification. This is only given to abnormalities that are designed by tumblebug donators from when Lobotomy Corporation was in development. Abnos like Army in Black or the Backwards Clock. These abnos are semi-canon, as we do now have a backwards clock aberration in the form of the steam transport machine, but we haven't seen anything about the donator abnos themselves in Ruina or Limbus, so who knows. Overall, the letter code just serves as a very wide classification for abnormalities that just gives a basic sense of their overall stories and origins. The number code is the second part of the abnormality classification, and we unfortunately don't have any official confirmation on what these numbers stand for. The Lobotomy Corporation wiki, however, has fan-made interpretations of what the numbers stand for, so that's what I'm using for a basis. The numbers range from 1 to 9 and are as follows. 1 is humanoid, 2 is animal, 3 is religious, 4 is inanimate object, 5 is machine slash artifact, 6 is abstraction slash amalgamation, 7 is breaching tool, there is no 8, and 9 is for tool. Now, some of these are pretty self-explanatory, but some of them need additional clarification. Number 1, humanoid, and number 2, animal, are very easily defined, and there's not really any complaints I can make about them. They work pretty well for the sake of their respective abnos. Number 3, religious, however, feels like a too specific of a term for this class of abnormalities. Sure, there are abnos such as Blue Star, One Sin, and White Knight, but not Plague Doctor. They are instead considered humanoid, here. But there's also Fragment of the Universe, Dimensional Refraction Variant, Censored, and Melting Love. 
This is a very strange set of abnormalities, and the religious aspect of them isn't very present in the latter four. You could argue something like melting love could count as religious due to a cult-like following it makes out of employees, but if that were the case, why wouldn't something like red shoes or singing machines fit into this category too? My best conclusion to make is that while the term religious certainly seems too specific, I think tying it to something like belief may be a better classification for the three group. It's still very similar, but opens the classification wide enough to better accommodate the fact that Fragment of the Universe, Dimensional Refraction Variant, and Censored are all very incomprehensible and require belief, you could say. I think there's a, probably a better term out there for what I'm trying to say is, but religious comes off as a little too specific for the sake of this group. Both number 4, Inanimate Objects, and 5, Machine Slash Artifact, are very similar classifications. They both are for inanimate abnormalities, however, priority is given towards the Machine Slash Artifact classification over any other classifications. That is, if one abnormal could fit multiple categories, it is put into Machine Slash Artifact. Some examples of this are how Bloodbath could reasonably either be inanimate object or Machine Slash Artifact, but is put in Machine Slash Artifact or how the warm-hearted woodsman could reasonably be either humanoid or machine-slash-artifact, but is put into machine-slash-artifact. It's also noted how anything that isn't humanoid-slash-animal-like is put into inanimate objects, even if they are still fairly humanoid. My point being how Snow White's apple is an inanimate object, as a humanoid plant with limited ways of movement is classified as an inanimate object in this case. And similarly, Queen Bee is also an inanimate object, despite being animal-like by, well, being a bee. It's most likely due to how Queen Bee is a hybrid of a bee and a beehive, and therefore is much more inanimate than animalistic. However, Naked Nest is a very similar situation to Queen Bee, since it's, you know, a nest for an animal, but it's classified as an animal instead of an inanimate object. Naked Nest is even less animate than Queen Bee, and is... Just kind of strange in that regards. The specifics confuse me, but I don't think there's a particular purpose to this beyond just being a minor inconsistency, so who knows. Before we move on to the sixth category, I also wanted to quickly go over how the classification is based entirely on the primary entity of the abnormality. While Welchears is a vending machine and two shrimp people, it's classified as a machine slash artifact, and only the vending machine matters for the classification. Similarly, Dream of a Black Swan is an animal due to the fact that the brothers present in the containment chamber are not the main entity, instead the swan itself is. Number 6 is listed as abstraction slash amalgamation on the wiki. This is a very odd category, and it's because there are only two abnormalities in it, 1.76 MHz and nothing there. What these two have in common that warrants their own classification may not be obvious, but I do have a theory of my own. 6 is instead for nothing. This fits Megahertz since there isn't any kind of physical form for the entity, and fits nothing there to its lack of an identity of its own being nothing and requiring the flesh of humans to take up a real form of its own. This is another case of my exact word choice maybe not conveying the best message, but I think you may still get a good sense of what I'm trying to say. It's also possibly conflicted by abnormalities such as Dimensional Refraction Variant, but even that does have a form, even if it is incomprehensible at best. Number 7, Breaching Tool, only fits a single abnormality, that being Yang. It's the only Breaching Tool abnormality in the game, so there may have been more planned at some point or another, and they wanted to separate them classification-wise somehow, as it is, you know, somewhere in between a tool and a normal abno. Number 8 is Unused, however, based on its positioning, it possibly would have been another tool abno subcategory, but it's impossible to say based on what we know. And 9 is where every non-Yang tool abno goes. This is why there's stuff like No Skin Prophecy or Flesh Idol in the religious section, since even if a lot of the tool abnos would make more sense going otherwise, a lot of them are machines, a lot of them are semi-religious, stuff like that. They all just go in this category, no matter what. That's all I have to say on the classification number. There's still a lot of uncertainty and strange rule regarding what goes where, but it's pretty understandable even going off of what little we know so far. Moving on to the individual code, this one is very straightforward. If you're familiar with SCP, it's a lot like the numbering system for SCPs. Each abnormality gets its own individual code, and there are no repeats. Nothing more to say on this one, it's just a nice way to give each abnormality its own number, and it's possibly paying homage to SCP in general. 
Lobotomy Corporation is wears its SCP inspiration on its sleeve, and it's even stated in the description for it on the Steam page that it is based on things such as SCP. So that definitely wouldn't be shocking. Now, the fourth code I mentioned for the sake of the classification are the risk levels. To people who are unfamiliar with older Lobcorp forms and are only aware of the current one, this may seem very unfamiliar. However, that's because there was a fourth part to each abnormalized code in earlier builds of the game, namely the Legacy version. The code was either dash Z, dash T, dash, dash H, dash W, or dash A, and those of course stand for Zayn, Teth, He, Vav, and Aleph respectively. This would make it so an abnormality's classification would show the risk level of the abnormality from the get-go. It was of course later removed, likely so that you wouldn't know just how dangerous each abnormality would be when you first obtained it. But I'd like to include it here just for the sake of covering everything. But that's all for the classification Lobotomy Corporation. Pretty understandable stuff once you get to know it, although it is still shrouded in a fair bit of mystery. But now, the next step is apparent. Let's go over in detail the classification system in Limbus, and once that's dealt with, we'll, we'll compare and contrast the two to try and figure out just how this modern classification system works. Similar to Lobotomy Corporation, the classification in Limbus Company is broken into four different parts, although there are some differences. There is still the classification letter, but that's followed by three different numerical classifications that don't seem to fit the pattern of Lobotomy Corporation 1 to 1 and service level, which I will refer to as number code 1, 2, and 3 respectively. The classification letters of O, F, and T return in Limbus, and they function as the same meaning as they did in Blobcorp. However, D, Donator, is gone, and there are two new additional letters in its stead, M and S. For M, there's currently three abnormalities that use this letter, Doomsday Calendar, My Form Empties, and Brazen Bull. What these three have in common, and what I believe the M stands for, is Mythology. Each of these abnormalities are based on a certain mythology, with Doomsday Calendar being Mayan, My Form Empties being Buddhist, and Brazen Bull being Greek. The big issue with this theory is how mythology differs itself from fairy tales, as I'd mentioned that anything based on a story in general could fit under fairy tale and Lobcorp. However, Limps' classifications are somewhat different from that of Lobcorp, so maybe one of these differences could be that mythic mythology designation is used for many abnormalities that Lobcorp classifies as fairy tale. A good example of this actually, not for fairy tale, but for trauma, is how Void Dream is a trauma abnormality in Lobotomy Corporation, but it's based on the Japanese myths of the yokai, specifically the Baku, which is a demon that dre eats dreams. This very well could fit under mythology a lot better than trauma. And this also could solve the confusion regarding open can of well cheers, as it is a recent myth from Korea as opposed to being a fairy tale, so it also could make a lot of sense being a dash M. As far as S goes, there are six identities that are classified as S, those being the six Pekatuli currently in Limbus. S pretty clearly stands for Sin, and likely is just used for the Pekatuli since they are born from Sins instead of anything else. There's no normal abnormalities marked as S, and I don't particularly expect that to change anytime soon, although who knows. Moving onwards from the classification letter, the remaining part of the code is going to be less familiar territory, as it's going to start to distance itself a little bit from how Lobotomy Corporation classifications work. Classification number 1 ranges from 1 to 8, so there are a pretty similar situation of the classification number as Lobcorp, but there's some differences that definitely make it seem very strange. Code 1 consists of the three fairies, Brazen Bull, Blubbering Toad, and Papa Bongi, who does have an abno code despite being a distortion. In Lobcorp, this would be the humanoids, but that doesn't necessarily seem to be the case here. While it definitely fits some of them, you could argue it fits Brazen Bull to it being a person stuck within a brass bowl in the Legends, and you could argue that Phalangern is here despite being a mess of roots, simply because that's where the other fairies are. In fact, Phalangern has the exact same code as Fairy Longlegs across the entire thing. Fairy Gentleman is almost the same as those two, but just has a slightly different final digit. But I digress. There's almost no way to argue about the blubbering ho toad being human, however. It's just a frog, so it's hard to get a good sense as to why it would be considered human. Now, Code 2 was for the animalistic abnos in Lobcorp, and in Limbus it applies to Golden Apple, 
Crawling Inquisitor, Slithering Inquisitor, Headless Ichthys, Alleyway Watchdog, Drifting Fox, Shock Centipede, and Wayward Passenger. Almost e all of these are either animals or animalistic enough. For the Crawling and Slithering Inquisitors, it's important to remember that those aren't the abnormalities themselves, and those are instead corrosions based on those respective abnos. They seem to be a lion and a snake, respectively, so it's, they're likely just animal-like abnormalities. The big outlier, however, is the Wayward Passenger. It's a human who is very monstrous in appearance due to being trapped between dimensions. It doesn't seem like an animal to me, but maybe it's lost his humanity in the process or something cheesy like that. Code 3 was religion, or in my interpretation, belief in Lobcorp. But there's no three abnos in Limbus. The fact that my form empties or sign of roses or something like that isn't here is definitely odd. But who knows? Code 4, however, seems to be pretty one for one with Lobcorp's 4, inanimate objects. It consists of Ebony Queen's Apple, Doomsday Calendar, Have You Become Strong, or Hurdly as it's called in game, because that's the like byproduct of it, Pink Shoes, My Form Empties, So That No One Will Cry, and Sign of Roses. All of these seem to be pretty fitting for inanimate objects, though, especially since Snow White's Apple was an inanimate object in Lobcorp, and have you become strong is a robotic factory thing, and it just produced humanoid entities such as Hurtily. Code 5 in Lobcorp was the machine slash artifacts. However, there's only a single abno in Limbus that falls under this code. Baba Yaga. I suppose a giant ice palace could count as an artifact, or maybe Code 5 in Limbus is more so for location-based abnos and anything machine slash artifact-like was moved over to O4, such as Have You Become Strong being 4 instead of 5 as you'd realistically expect for a giant robot factory. Code 6 in Lobcorp was the one that we really didn't know much about, since it was only nothing there in 1.76 MHz. However, there's a few Limbus abnormalities that fall under this Code 6 as well. Everything there of an Inquisitor and KQE are both seemingly aberrations of nothing there having very similar codes to it, so they don't really add too much to the pool, but the inclusion of Steam Transport Machine is really what throws a wrench in my previous theory. What category does nothing there, 1.76 MHz, and Steam Transport Machine all fall under? I don't really have a clue. The wiki's interpretation of abstraction slash amalgamation doesn't fit Steam Transport Machine at all, so I unfortunately think we're just going to have to leave this as to be determined. Sooner or later, we will get another abno that falls under this classification, and maybe then we'll have a better sense to what exactly this means. Both Code 7 and 9, Breaching Tool and Tool respective in Lobgur, are not used in Limbus as of now. We haven't seen any proper tool abnos beyond possibly have you become strong in Limbus, so we don't know if they're going to be returning at all or if they're just being retired as a concept for the time being. Code 8, however, which was the unused one in Lobcorp, now has a proper meaning. It's given to the six Pecatule and likely just means the Pecatule. Odd that it's pretty much the same as the S letter, but maybe there's going to be some variety at some point, stuff like sin-based abnormalities or... Pecatule based on things that aren't necessarily sins, even though Pecatule is just sin in Latin. Who knows. That's all for the first number code, and the similarities yet differences to the systems of Lobcorp definitely are odd. Some things line up perfectly, while others seem to have glaring flaws that really make me wonder how much of this is right. But we still have more codes to go through. Next up is the second number code. Now, the second number code is one that I hadn't heard many people discuss at all, I don't think I even heard anyone talk about it, so it took me some time to figure out just what it means, but once it clicked, it seemed so obvious that I really wondered how it never clicked before or why more people don't talk about this. This number indicates which district of the city the abnormality was contained in. What I mean by this is that the abnormality with an O4 in this coder from District 4, aka D Corp, which is where Canto 1 took place. 10 is for District 10, which is J Corp, and 11 is for District 11, which is K Corp, so on and so forth. For almost all abnormalities, they're exactly where you think they would be, and it is based on the location in which nest they were contained in, not which district they're based off of. For example, Shock Centipede is based off of W Corp, but was contained within a Lob Corp branch in K Corp, so it gets the 11 code for District 11. I'll go through some of the notable codes for Abnos and see just what else there is to say about this. O4 D Corp. 
was the first location of the first canto, so logically, Abnos from the first canto have this classification. This includes any of the Pecatule whose first appearance in the game was Canto 1, being the Wrath, Gluttony, and Sloth Pecatule. There's one odd exception in this dungeon, however. Ebony Queen's Apple is 03 instead of 04, meaning that it was originally contained in C Corp. Ebony Queen was the very first Abno shown for Limbus, being revealed around two years ago now, so it may have just been due to the inconsistencies that were later ironed out. Or maybe it's just because if she was 04, her full code instead would have been 004404, which was instead saved for my form empties. Looking back at earlier footage of Limbus, Ebony Queen's Apple had an entirely different classification, that being 00449SP. This is a very clear reference to Snow White's Apple, since that abnormality had a code of 00442. Except it's got a dash SP at the end, assumably indicating that it is some kind of aberration. Now, we didn't even see the current Abno code for Ebony Queen until February 10th, 2023, which was a mere few weeks prior to the game's launch. The only other Abno whose code was shown around a similar time was some of the Pecatule on January 20th, which was the first time the modern classification for Limbus showed up. What this could mean is any time in between September 17th, 2022, which is the last time we saw the 00442 SP code, and January 20th, 2023, the Abno code was modified, so Abno Queen being the very first Abno may mean it just was subjected to different rules and it was changed somewhere in the process. Or maybe Ebony Stem was originally in C Corp. Who knows? My form empties, as I briefly allude to, also has the 04 code, although Refraction Railway and Mirror Dungeon Originating Abnormalities don't exactly exist in this universe, so there isn't too much to say about this. And once again, since the Crawling Inquisitors are a corrosion instead of an Abno itself, we don't know what or where the original abnormality was, so it could have been in D Corp at some point or another, and there was just some of its ego in the Lob Corp branch under Sinclair's mansion. 10, J Corp, is the gambling district, and all the abnormalities you would expect to be here are here, alongside the Gloom Pecatule, since that was its first appearance, as well as the Alleyway Watchdog. This leads me to believe that early in development, the Alleyway Watchdog might have been planned to show up in the Kanto 2 dungeon, and was banished to the Mirror Dungeon for one reason or another. The only real sporting evidence for this is the fact that we've seen concept art for the Alleyway Watchdog pretty early on, and the fact that it is one of the only Abnormalities that has three different egos in the game, the only other one being Scorch Girl's fourth match flame, and I guess technically Sunshower if you want to count Heathcliff's Sunshower identity, but otherwise, it's very strange for it to be given to an Abnormality that just doesn't present itself in the story at all. Then 11 is K Corp. Now there's a lot in this one due to both Canto 3 and Canto 4 taking place in this district, and even though they focus on different lob group branches, it's all District 11 so they get lumped in together. The Abnos from the Canto 3 and 4 dungeons, Papa Bongi, the Lust and Pride Pecatule, those are all pretty obvious as to why they're there. The Fairy Long Legs and Phalanx are also in this category, due to being very closely related to that of the Fairy Gentleman, as mentioned before. And Headless Ichthys being here is, means it's likely a similar case to the Alleyway Watchdog with the Kanto 3 dungeon, perhaps even more so thanks to it using the Kanto 3 dungeon's third floor as a background in its early mirror dungeon fights. Otherwise, all pretty normal stuff here. Now, 20 is T-Corp. The only things that use the T-Corp thing right now are everything there of an Inquisitor and KQE. Now, personally, I'm inclined to believe that it's just because PM wanted them to have the same code as nothing there, and these two abnormalities are more so using a more traditional Lob Corp designation to them. Now, this isn't, you know, proven at all, so it's hard to say for sure, but they don't seem to be T-Corp related at all, we saw them much before that, so I'm personally not going to take this information into account much at all, but of course, you can think whatever you want. 1D1 is U Corp, which is going to be the target of Canto 5. The Refraction Railway 2 Abnos, except for Failing Turn, all use this code, likely just for simplicity's sake, since Limbus Company was in District 21 when they dealt with Refraction Railway 2. We're definitely going to be seeing this code a lot more in the upcoming Canto, however. Now, the real interesting outlier is there's a single abnormality who has the code 23, which is W Corp. 
For some reason, they've got the code of District 23 in its classification, which is the Cannibalism District, and W Corp is known as, you know, the Horrifying Speedy Travel Corporation. So what Abno has the horrible honor of being from W Corp? That's right. It's the blubbering toad of all things. I, I, I don't know what else I can say about that. Blubbering toad is from the railway, so we never see it physically in our dimension, so... I have absolutely no idea what this could mean. But it's really funny. So that's cool. But that's the sets of districts represented by the Abnos we've seen so far. A good thing to note is that all the Abnos seen in Lobotomy Corporation would likely have the 12 code if we are to see them in Limbus, since that's L Corp's district. But the second code ties very closely to the third code, so let's get to that one. Now, the third code is the individual code from Lob Corp's classification system. But with a notable difference, each district has its own set of individual codes. For example, O, O2, O4, O6, which is Golden Apple, and T, O4, 10, O6, Have You Become Strong, have the exact same individual code of O6, but they've got different locational codes being O4 and 10, respectively, so therefore they belong to different series of abnormalities, you could say. This is likely why Lobcorp abnormality codes have one less number than Limbus abnormalities on average, as the 12 in between the number code and the individual code was just implied back then since we didn't know anything else. Now that there are just so many more abnormalities, and to avoid the SCP issue of the number just getting higher and higher as things go on, PM probably added the locational code to Limbus in order to have a little bit more complexity in the number of options they have for numbering their new abnormalities. The only case of a locational and individual code both being the same is Fairy Longlegs and Fae Lantern, as mentioned before, but that's because they're both very similar fairies, likely as some kind of set. But that's a topic for another time. Now we've got a pretty good sense as to the structure of the abnormality coding system, and how that they are the exact same across the two games, despite the strange differences that are pretty easy to understand now. But there's still quite a few questions left, so let's go over them right now. There are a few abnormalities in Limbus that seem to use the risk level part of the classification that was only used in Legacy Lobcorp. These are the Proceeding Inquisitors, Crawling Inquisitor, Slither Inquisitor, and their variants of differing strength. All of them have dash TE at the end of their code, which has something to do with how they aren't the actual abnos themselves, but instead corrosions using those abnos egos. Dash TE could very well stand for Teth based on the risk level classification, and could indicate that this is a Teth level corrosion. Limbus has shown that the same ego can be different risk levels depending on the person, with things like Sun Shower being Teth or He, and Soda being Zayn or Teth. So it's very possible that any corroded enemies we see down the line will either be Dash ZA, Dash TE, Dash HE, Dash WA, and Dash AL respectively, being two letters instead of one this time. The actual corroded Inquisitors we see in Canto 3 are almost all Teth, except for the weaker version of the Crawling Inquisitor. So it definitely seems like that could be the case. Now, the number code being the same across the two game systems definitely still arises some issues. Why is Blubbering Toad and Humanoid? Why is Wayward Passenger an animal? What's the difference between 4 and 5 if Bobby Yaga is the only Limbus Abno in 5? Are, there, are we still putting machines in 5? Are we putting machines in 4 now? Is 5 something else entirely? Or is this just a strange outlier? Now, are there going to be tool Abnos eventually in Limbus? And are we actually going to see the 7 and 9 codes again? Will they be repurposed? And, of course, just what is the deal with the 6 code? Now, the unfortunate thing is... I don't know if we have enough d information on the topic in order to shine light to these yet. We need more data, aka more Limbus abnormalities so we can get a good sense of the rules and the exceptions of the classification system. That certainly isn't the proper answer to the questions at hand, but it's really the best I can do right now, so I apologize for that. So, in conclusion, here is a summary of how abnormality classification is broken down. First off is the letter code. This gives you an idea for the basis of an abnormality. It can be T for Trauma, F for Fairy Tale, O for Original, D for Donator, M for Mythology, or S for Sin. Second up is the Number Code, a number from 1 to 9 that indicates what vague form the abnormality takes. 1 is Humanoid, 2 is Animal, 3 is Religious slash Belief, 4 is Animate Object, 
5 is Artifact slash Location, 6 is Undefined, 7 is Breaching Tool, 8 is Pacatule, and 9 is Tool. Third, we've got the Location Code. A number from 1 to 26 that indicates which district's Lobotomy Corporation branches that Abnormality belong to. The number corresponds to that district's number. For example, if the number is 04, that responds to District 4, which is D Corp. If there is no location code present, assume it is supposed to be 12, as it belongs to the main branch of Lobotomy Corporation, L Corp. Fourth, and final most of the time, is the individual code. Each abnormality has a unique individual code per their location code, and it serves as a way to uniquely code each abnormality. And then finally, the risk level is not present on every abnormality, but if it is present, it corresponds to the abnormality's risk level. Z is Zayn, T slash TE is Tef, H is He, W is Vav, and A is for Alef. This is also used to indicate the risk levels of the ego for corroded individuals. But that's all we know about the classification systems of Lobotomy Corporation and Limbus Company. This video ended up being a little longer than I expected, but I don't think I thought there'd be this much to say about something like the classification system. But that'll be all for this time. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!